In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to find the overall velocity of a projectile, also known as the resultant velocity. So before approaching any one of these problems, you want to make sure you're aware of all the main projectile concepts before you start to approach the problem solving process. So a lot of times with the projectile problem, you break stuff into an X column and a Y column. And the reason you do that is because there are no forces in the horizontal direction when something is released or launched. And because there are no forces, it'll stay moving at a constant velocity in the horizontal direction. And we'll only use this formula over here. In the vertical direction, we have the force of gravity pulling downwards, causing the object to accelerate. So on this end of our um, little T-chart, we are going to plug in values and only use these three formulas because these three formulas are for an object that is accelerating. So it is speeding up or slowing down while it's moving upwards or downwards. So with that being said, let's go ahead and solve this problem first because it's a little bit more simple, and then we'll solve this one afterwards. So when this object strikes the ground, it's not going to strike it completely vertically or horizontally. It's going to be a little combination of both of them. It's going to strike the ground at an angle like this. Okay. Now, when you add vectors together, you always use something called a tip to tail method. So we have a component that goes horizontally. And when it strikes the ground, it's still going to have that horizontal component of three meters per second. And I know that because as I mentioned earlier, the horizontal component moves at a constant velocity. So it's always going to have a horizontal velocity of three. And then we also have a vertical velocity here and we'll call that VF in the Y direction. So after you connect those vectors tip to tail, then you would have one overall velocity, which we'll call VF. Okay, so basically if we find VFY, we'll be able to solve for our final VF, our resultant velocity right here. So the question is how do we solve for our VF? And the way we have to approach that is we need three variables in this column, okay? Because based on the way that these formulas are set up, you need three known variables. So in the Y column, I have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared because that's acceleration due to gravity. We have an initial velocity of zero meters per second. Okay? And the reason why we're allowed to use zero is because the object isn't moving up or down as it starts. It's just moving three meters per second completely in the horizontal direction, no upward or downward motion. So in the vertical direction, we can say VI equals zero. And then the third thing we can use is we can use a delta y of negative two meters because the ball is being displaced downwards. We're going to call that negative two. Okay, so our next job is to find our VFY, which is basically a VF here or a VF here. It doesn't look like I can use this formula because I don't have a T. So I'm going to go ahead and use this third formula over here and plug it in so I can find my VFY. All right, so I found my VF, it came out to 6.26 meters per second. And technically it would be negative because it's moving downwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a negative here and here. So now we're almost done finding the final velocity, um, our overall final velocity for this projectile. And we're just gonna use Pythagorean theorem because I just want the hypotenuse of my triangle and I know the two other sides of my triangle. So let me go ahead and finish this problem off and find my final VF. 
Okay, so how I set it up is I use Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's why I call it c. Um, and then I just squared both of these values, added them up, and then square rooted both sides. And then I found a final velocity of 6.94 meters per second. All right, now going to our second calculation, this one's going to be a little bit different, but has some simul similarities. Um, first of all, we do have our triangle to start off with. So we have a velocity of eight meters per second. I'm just extending the arrow so it's a little bit easier to draw my triangle. And then we have a X component and a Y component. And again, we're looking for that final velocity when it strikes the ground. So again, it's going to be sort of similar in the sense that we're going to have some kind of vertical component and some kind of horizontal component at the very end. So for this one, we do want to use some trig and use our sine and cosine function in order to find our Vy and our Vx. Um, so let me go ahead and find our components and then I'm going to place it into these two columns over here. All right, so what I did is I used a sine of 30 degrees and that gave me the opposite Vy over the hypotenuse, so Vy over eight. I did the similar type setup as, except I used the cosine of 30 degrees to get my adjacent side, my Vx over the hypotenuse, basically multiplied both sides by eight to get the eight over to the left side. So Vy equals eight times sine of 30 degrees, which gave me four meters per second. And then eight times cosine of 30 degrees gave me the 6.92 meters per second. So going back to our projectile concepts, if I fire something up vertically in the air at four meters per second, when it comes back down to ground level, the final velocity is going to be the same number, but a different sign. It's going to be negative four meters per second. So that basically allows us to finish um, everything that we wanted to complete for our triangle later on, because we know our final velocity over here is negative four. And we know our Vx over here is 6.92 meters per second. So similarly to the other one, our horizontal velocity is going to remain constant. So it's going to be sliding over at 6.92 meters per second as it gets released and then all throughout its motion. And then also when it lands, it still has the same Vx of 6.92. And then when it eventually lands, it has a final velocity of negative 4 meters per second. So we work this out similarly to how we did over here. We would replace the three with the four and then the six point, excuse me, negative 6.26 with the 6.92, square them, add them up, square root both sides, and then you would find your final velocity, which would come out to 7.99 meters per second. So basically, anytime you're trying to find a final resultant velocity, you're basically finding the hypotenuse of a triangle. You're using some horizontal component, which will be constant from the beginning as the 3 was and how the 6.92 was. And then you have to find the final vertical velocity in your Y column using one of these acceleration formulas. And then when you find those two, use the Pythagorean theorem and then find the hypotenuse of your triangle. And then you'll have your overall velocity of your projectile. I hope that was helpful in helping you set up, understand, and solve an overall velocity of a projectile known as a resultant velocity. Thank you for watching and listening.